Hi there everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at Auto Filter, the second in our series of going through Ableton Live's uh, built-in plugins A through Z. Alright, so uh, let's start out with what uh, Auto Filter is and does. And uh, I've used Auto Filter on three of the tracks that we're talking about today, but let's start by soloing out this percussion track and listening to it dry. So that's what it sounds like just by itself. Uh, but if we add an auto filter, we can get some nice movement. And you notice we've cut out a lot of frequencies. We've, we've kind of narrowed the frequencies into those kind of upper mids. And uh, that's what a filter is. You know, a filter, if you know how an EQ works, well, an EQ is just a very, very fancy filter uh, with some unique curves. But uh, let's begin by taking a look at the plugin itself. We'll switch over to the demonstration version. And we have four types of filters. We have first the low pass filter. Now, low pass means we let the low pass through. It seems a little counterintuitive at first because you would think low uh, it would cut out the low. That's Some people would say low cut, but actually, and this is confusing, but low pass means high cut and high pass means low cut. But I recommend sticking with low pass, high pass. So low pass, as you can see here, everything inside this area gets to stay, everything outside goes. So low pass is letting the low through, cutting out the high. High pass is the exact opposite, very easy. Next is band pass, and this is where we select only a region of the frequencies, cutting everything below it and above it. Notch is kind of the inverse of that, where we're taking out only a section of the frequencies and leaving alone everything below and above it. All right, so those are our four types of filters. And uh, the reason this is called auto filter is because it's, well, automated. We can get some movement with it. Uh, and that starts, I think, over here in the envelope section. So let's take a look. Here it says envelope amount. This controls the extent to which the envelope affects the filter frequency. Well, what is the envelope? In our, for our purposes, just think of the envelope as the movement in the sound. So let's listen to how this affects the sound and we're going to leave the attack and release the same attack and release are the same as in any plugin it just affects how quickly uh, something takes effect and how quickly that effect is taken out or taken off uh, but we're going to leave it where it is for demonstration purposes let's start with a band pass and listen to how this sounds let's start around say 800 Let's do a slow envelope. So you can hear the sound gets really low. As we get higher, you can hear that snapping how it's not only going higher in frequency, but also the movement becomes faster. All right, so that's uh, how the envelope works. And you can play with this, of course, with your own sounds. We also have down here the quantize beat section. So it says, with quantized beat enabled, the filter's frequency modulation is updated rhythmically as determined by the chosen uh, beat quantization value. So let's hear how that sounds. So we'll leave these settings as they were. Turn this, well, first let's start off. And now let's turn it on. Not much of a difference. Now we're at two, which means two sixteenth notes. Let's try eight. Not hearing much of a difference, right? Well, to really hear this difference, we need to crank the envelope a bit.
So it's pretty subtle, but it, it will help you quantize the effect uh, as you go through. All right, but let's leave that off for now as well. And then over here we have a section called LFO and sample and hold. So uh, if you don't know what an LFO is, an LFO uh, is a, uh, a way to um, kind of get some automated motion. It's basically a kind of wave, and you can choose your shape over here. You've got your sine wave, uh, your square, and, and everything, uh, all the typical ones you find here in live. Uh, we're, we'll stick with sine, and uh, let, let's just listen to what happens when we when we use it. So you can hear that adds even more movement. And right now we've got our rate, which is the speed at which the sound travels along this sine wave shape uh, at 0.11 hertz. We can also quantize this. So if we go in here, we can choose any uh, value of, of notes. But we're gonna stick to hertz actually, because I wanna take a look down here at the phase relationship. So this down here adjusts the amount of offset between the waveforms for the left and the right channel. So if you know anything about phase, it's when two audio signals are moving together and it's how kind of synchro synchronously they, they, they move together. It's a bit hard to explain, uh, but if you could see a picture of waveforms, that's very helpful. But uh, this can create some cool effects uh, with frequencies. So let's just hear how it sounds again. So you can kind of begin to hear the discrepancies uh, there, but but actually, right now we're in this mode uh, where we're in in phase mode. But if you want something a little more creative in the stereo field, I recommend clicking down here so you can get access to the spin mode. And what spin does? It detunes the two LFO speeds uh, relative to each other like it says over in the corner. So that can make some really cool effects. Let's hear how that sounds. And moving the rate again just changes the speed of uh, how fast we go up and down the sine wave. All right, so those are the basic features, but there's one more feature I want to touch on. You may have noticed this little upside down triangle. If you, we click that, we get the side chain. And actually, I've used the side chain already on another track. So let's switch over to our bass sound and let's play it without the auto filter. Really typical and really boring, right? So to give it some movement, I added this auto filter with a preset called Nebulo, should be in, in your copy of Live as well, and uh, used a notch filter pretty far down low. So let's hear how it sounds. So you're thinking, where is that awesome rhythm coming from in this boring bass loop? Well, I've side-chained it. Yes, side-chained it. So uh, side-chaining is pretty, pretty simple to understand. Just click the triangle, turn side-chaining on by clicking this button, and choose where to get your audio from. I chose to use my percussion, I'm sorry, not my percussion, my drum loop here, which, by the way, by itself sounds like this. So you can hear that rhythm over here. 
all right? And you can control how much gain, how much uh, volume the, uh, the source, in this case our drum loop, has on it. So if we turn this way up, we'll just basically get a full signal. Because it's so loud, it's not really affecting it. So we want to get it so... So that we're getting a good rhythm. You can also dry wet this. I like to go all the all the way wet though. And that can create some really nice effects as well. All right. Uh, so that's going to be everything I think that I wanted to tell you about the auto filter. There was one more slight thing. You may have heard of this fade to gray kind of effect. Uh, and you can do this several ways, but one way to do uh, something similar is with auto filter and simple delay, a plugin we'll cover in the future, in an audio effect rack. I didn't really use the fade to gray effect here, but I used something similar. Let's listen to how uh, this sounded before I made this audio effect rack. I just added a simple auto filter. It sounded like this. Sounds pretty good already, but in the context of the song, I realized I wanted it to have a little more motion. So uh, what I did was I made an audio effect rack with the, the same auto filter. Uh, maybe I raised the frequency. No, they're both at 527. Uh, and I added a simple delay. This is just the stock setting. I didn't touch it at all. And I added an LFO, what we uh, the thing we talked about earlier. And I mapped three parameters, the Q value, the feedback, and the dry wet to this knob, the movement knob, and I connected the LFO to the movement knob. So now it sounds like this. So compare. Now, whether that's something attractive that you want to put in your song, that's really up to you. Uh, but I, I like the way it sounded in the context of this uh, small sample track that I put together for this video. All right, so that's about it. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Also, I recommend checking out the manual uh, to your copy of Live. Just go to help read the live manual. All right, uh, so next time I'll be coming at you and we'll be talking about auto pan, another really cool stereo effect. So please check back for that one. All right, thanks.